I don't even know how to explain it, but something wonderful. Oh my God. It's a wonderful change. Hey, that has come over me. Hallelujah. I can't describe it. I don't have words for it, but God is going to minister. He's going to let us know we've stepped into this place where he has been trying to get us all along. Come on, saints of God. Where you've been was not where you were supposed to be. My God. But where you're headed, you're closer now than ever before. Ah, you ought to stay right on on this path. I'm going to stay on this path. I'm going to stay the course, glory to God. Because this is where I need to be. I need to be where I can hear from heaven. Hallelujah. Where I can storm the heavenlies, glory to God. Where I can go through the first heaven, my God. Uh, war in the second heaven, thank you, God. Uh, and receive in the third heaven. Somebody know what I'm talking about. This is the realm we've been called to. My God, to storm the airways. My Lord, you have the power to change an entire day. Glory to God. You can make a whole day turn around and be different because of the melodies. Oh, God. Well, bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is covenant. The covenant is a sign. It's an end time sign. It is an end time sign. The covenant is an end time sign. And some of the most prophetic scriptures that the Lord would speak into covenant and into law, into a husband and into a wife. The most powerful, the most revealing come from a book called Song of Solomon. Because God saw love as a song. It seems like we're in this theme of music and we can't get out of it. I'm not even going to try because I know God needs something different to happen for this generation. There are those who have been anointed, hallelujah, for such a time as this. And you feel like your life has been on hold. Your life is not on hold. Your life is in preparation. Hallelujah. And when I taught you about the days of the week, Every Friday ought to be your day because Friday is the preparation day. Every Friday ought to be getting ready for what God is getting ready to do in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Because this is the will of the Lord for this generation. And so much of what has been, you know, inside of you, as the Lord begins to release it, you're going to need a greater level of understanding. You're going to need to realize what is happening to you. You're going to need to understand that God is not limited to one type of anointing. If you understand the scriptures, David was anointed three times. Three different occasions for three different things. And sometimes we don't understand when the anointing starts to shift on our life you'll start coming into something that you weren't really interested in before. I'm so glad that God doesn't go by our interests, but he goes by what he has invested within us. And so as I begin to talk about covenant today, and of course, uh, I always, I, I welcome our young people because I think that this is crucial for them to learn what we didn't learn. I think it's crucial for us to realize that God has a word for this generation concerning covenant. And we say covenant because the word sex you will not find anywhere in the Bible. As I've shared over and over again, literally sex, the word is derived from the number six, which is the number of man. Mankind was created on the sixth day. 
represents the genders, it represents the creation. And so literally this is where the term, the Greek sex came from. But God always wanted us to understand it from a realm of covenant when two people or two parties come together. Ergo, because it was God's idea, it was God's plan. One of the first things you're going to understand then concerning covenant is that you have to, I want you to learn a spiritual triangle today. How can I, can I put it that way? A spiritual triangle. So those of you who have pen and paper, I want you to draw a triangle as best as you can. If you got to use something to make the lines, that's okay too. But I want you to draw a triangle. And I want you to understand what you're doing right now because so many seem to think that, you know, happiness and the bliss of marriage and all those things is so far from them. I don't care how long you've been married, care if you've never been married. This is an absolute. How many know the word of God is an absolute? So I'm about to give you an absolute. Amen? How many of drink, can you, can you draw, you can draw a triangle? All right. <laughs> now at the bottom of the triangle on the left side, I want you, on, on, it's my left, I guess, from your right. On the left side, I want you to write the word husband at the very bottom of the triangle on the left side. And then of course on the other side, you to write the word wife. Now at the very tip or the very top of the triangle, I want you to simply write out the word God. Okay? Now draw an arrow from the word husband to God. Just take a little arrow and straight up the triangle to God and do the same thing for the wife. Now what you have is an example because you've heard the scripture but now I want you to see how it works. Ecclesiastes 4 and 12 says, a threefold cord is not easily broken. So in other words, the closer the husband draws to God, the closer the wife draws to God. Now look at how close, follow your arrow to God, look at how close now they are as opposed to where the arrow began. Look at how far apart they are at the bottom of the triangle. Notice I said at the bottom of the triangle. And how, so you're saying, okay, but one seems to maybe go for God more than the other one. So how many can picture, okay, so you got like a, an arrow going kind of halfway up, whereas the other one is all the way up. How many, how many can see that scenario as well? Okay. That's what makes it so wonderful because no matter what goes on, nothing can stop you, nothing should stop you from going to God. Now the statement I would make in reference to that is that, and I read this and it was very powerful, I always borrow from the Jewish commentaries because you all, you all understand they do have the roots of what we need to be doing right now. And there was a commentary that says that God has a lifelong knowledge of your mate. Therefore, he is the only third party of any marriage. So let's say your mate is not making his way up that triangle toward God. But then if you keep making your way towards that triangle, you're making your way to the one that knows your mate better than you. When you stop just because they stop, then nobody is getting to God. Nobody's getting to